Okay, all right. So I am here to tell you about Lake Michigan shipwrecks and give you a photo tour. And Dean's going to give you a lot of history. Not Is a lot. Stop. Good, good. Okay. And this has um, some a few pictures that I've labeled from other people. Um, you know, we all of us we've heard from our introductions how we all travel a lot. It's really fun. Um, and so, yeah, this is places that I've traveled to dive um, or done a dive while traveling. And, um, you know, when I, I used to live in New York, and when I moved here in 2010, I decided to get into the local shipwreck diving scene. Um, so I bought a dry suit, got from my dry suit certification, which is like three dives, <laughs> and then went right out to the lake, which maybe I wouldn't suggest now, but uh, um, yeah, that's what I did. And I've now done a lot of dry suit dives with um, um, more than half of them <coughs> in Lake Michigan, right? mostly Lake Michigan. Um, I'm not going to talk about all these wrecks. Um, and I'm uh, sort of a mid scale, I'm sort of a light tech diver, unlike some of the people I know here. Uh, but uh, I can do 165. <laughs> um, and I've dived with a camera since about 2006, but then um, Eric sort of steered me on to getting an Olympus system in 2015. Okay, this is a picture of me underwater, taken by one of our friends, Abhishek, out in the lake. That's actually my old dry Abhishek suit. was too tired to come here today. Oh, that sucks. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. And here's my camera set up uh, now, just recently in um, Lembe, except I don't use strobes in Lake Michigan, typically. I just want to get the wide angle, yeah. and the strobes are not going to do diddly squat for you. So I just use the camera. No, give it your little back scan. Yeah, 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 that's really, that's really nice. Thank you for that suggestion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is my new dry suit coming up on this ladder. And by the way, you see this big center post on the ladder? Don't get that post between your finger and the rope. Oh. I can speak from personal experience. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, so um, this is a picture of places that I've dived in Lake Michigan. And what I want to point out here is, um, you know, the depths of Lake Michigan. These are meters, so here's like eight, nine hundred feet out here in this part of Lake Michigan. It gets really deep out there. Most of the wrecks that we're diving, of course, are pretty close to the shore. And that's because those are the ones that are diver accessible. Um, unless you're going to go and die on the Titanic and a submersible. You know, okay, the, light blue? Uh, the light blue is 100 meters. Yeah, 100 meters, so 300 feet. It's pretty <laughs> cool. So, you know, that's convenient because most of the slates are pretty close to shore, not a very long boat ride, except for one with a few that's like that. 45 minutes, an hour? It's an hour. An hour, yeah. 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 No, it just means I get to hit you. That's right. Okay, you <laughs> explain Yeah. And another thing that has happened, so I did, I only started diving lake locally in 2010. Um, the lake has changed. And has anyone dived here before the zebra mussels? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So old this, this yeah. building used to be a coral. Right. And they cleaned it up. Yeah. <laughs> they, they removed a lot of the fish light because they didn't have much heat. But for divers, it's been great. And it started out with uh, zebra mussels coming in from the bilge water or the ship from, I think, the Black Sea or something. Yeah. And then quagga mussels sort of took over. And you can see here by 2010, quagga mussels, they're, they're like everywhere. You'll see you'll see a few quagga mussels in the beaches that I think. They're everywhere. It's been great for divers, though, because it gives you really good visibility sometimes. So let's head out. Um, and here we are. I'm going to start with one where I just have a picture. But if you wanted a starter first Lake Michigan wreck, this is a great one. Material service barge. It's really close to shore. It's right off of breakwater. And Dean, do you want to say anything about the history? Yeah. So this boat was, uh, it was built in 1929, and it sank in July 29, 1936. You gotta show a picture of the boat because that gives an idea. Well, I don't have one. You don't have a picture. You show. You had a picture of the boat on your computer. Yeah. That. Oh yeah. When I yeah. did that. Okay, there was a, a quickie when, yeah, I, yeah. when I tried that. What that was the material service. But anyway, the material service. Uh, that's the material service. But um, it uh, it really was designed to go on rivers. It was a self-propelled, self-unloader barge. And it was really designed to go on rivers. It wasn't designed to go on the open lake. But the captain, it was late at night, the captain said he didn't want to have to deal with the possible traffic of the Calce Canal, which would take him closer to the Calumet River. But so he decided to take the ship and sanitary canal up to the Chicago River and then traverse down Lake Michigan to Calumet River. 
He never made it. Uh, one of the problems with the boat was that uh, it had hatch covers that couldn't be locked. Because oh. they were doing work on, uh, they were changing a, a sand sucker system for it, and uh, they didn't finish the job. And so the hatches really couldn't be shut. Wow. So when the, the weather got bad, it only had two and a half feet of freeboard, so it was very, very low in the water, and the waves just came in and sank in 35 feet of water. How many people died on it? Um, 15 out of 22 people died alone. And, and, and when you go out, it sank just outside the perimeter. Yeah, yeah. So right. he, was, he was very, very close. A lot of people scene. were inside the boat, yeah. inside the hull. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And so they, a lot of them were trapped. And then some just got sucked down into the boat. But it's got these great cargo holds, which are very easy, raw beginners. On a good paper. day, you can almost get an idea of it here. On a good yeah. day with the sun streaming through, it's a beautiful yeah. day. Yeah. So that's the farthest south one. Oh, and that's uh, actually Eric's photo. Uh, Buccaneer is a purpose sunk wreck. And so here it's being sunk, a boat that, uh, as we heard, some of you participated in cleaning out. And that's a good thing. And uh, thank you. And yeah, then it was sunk out there. And do um, you want to say anything more about it? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know this boat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be Start here until 10 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> Started out as the Dexter with US Coast Guard revenue cutter, which meant it was it was designed to enforce the 18th Amendment, which was the anti-alcohol amendment. They think it raise the glass. Shot, yes, raise the glass of the 18th Amendment. Yeah. They, they, uh, Cheers to the 21st. Uh, it caused an international incident between uh, the United States and Canada. Because uh, in what, what day was day, was it? In in March 21st, 1929, it sank a run runner called the I'm Alone. A song was written about it, and uh, they uh, one the, the cook was killed in in, their, in, in the sinking, and um, it was in international water. So really, the Coast Guard had no right doing that. Uh, they ended up paying. I guess the Canadian government a bunch of money in 1935 as a result of that, but it really caused sort of a, a stir in Canada when that happened. Uh, and um, it was transferred over to the Navy in 1936. It was named uh, the YP 63, and it, it was armed, and it was uh, sort of a, a it was an escort boat and a submarine hunter, and um, and, and had anti-submarine duties. It's the I think the only. Uh, Boats sunk in the in the Great Lakes that served in World War II. Um, cool. It became a fishing vessel after the war, and then eventually got transferred over to the Wagner Charter Company, where it was turned into a party boat, basically a uh, charter boat, party boat, and it had a, a pirate theme. So they, they painted a pirate flag on it, and, and uh, uh, they sank it when we were cleaning the boat out. Uh, we found still wine bottles in there and stuff like that. I don't think we kept any on the boat. Maybe we did. Does anyone know when International Apocalypse the Pirate Day is? Mm. Oh, oh, I forgot. September 19th. September, 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 September something. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good boat to dive that day. <laughs> so this thing was sunk in uh, 2010, and it's changed over time, but it's still a decent dive. Uh, if you can squeeze into the engine room, it's real nice to explore the engine room. And uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, yeah, it's a couple of uh, diesel trunk en engines there. And 70 feet, so not too deep. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's, it's, it's perfectly. It's, nice it's, a, it's a nice dive. Again, it's it's broken up a little more than it, when, when it went safe, but there's still I still last time I was there, there's still a piece of a mirror. Yeah. So yeah. you can actually see yourself dive. Uh, kind of cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this now is one that's in tech territory, kind of light tech territory, but it's Thomas Hume. And it's a long trip out there. Um, and actually, one trip I made, I went out there, was with the previous boat that Double Action had, which was a double outboard. And um, one of the couplings to the prop went out. And the poor dive master was made to jump in the water and fix the prop with Captain Keith giving instructions. Oh, yeah, he, he, he'd be good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're sitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're sitting out there for like half hour, 45, 45 minutes, just kind of floating there, you know, engines off while poor Yosef was doing these yeah. repairs of them. Uh, yeah. But it's a really neat wreck. So I'll just kind of flip through pictures of it while Dean can describe the history. Yeah, it's a three-master schooner. Um, 
originally at least. I don't know if they took down a mast and turned it into a, a, a tow vessel. And I can't. I bottom remember. ropes around the bow. It went to. It went out. It, it, uh, six people died on this boat. I think it was the entire crew. That's one thing about schooners. You didn't usually need a very big crew because uh, you know it's not like these square riggers where you have to have people climbing up and, and all that kind of stuff. You can do pretty much everything from the deck. So you, you can get away with six people on the boat. And it has a penetration. You can drop down in a hatch and kind of swim through the middle of it. There was uh, some controversy at the time as how it how it sank because they know it disappeared in the middle of the lake. And there was some uh, thought that maybe it got ran by something, but it was known to be a leaky boat. And it was also, uh, did not have any cargo at the time it sank. So uh, so it, it was considered unstable. So it just, if it was bad weather, it probably made it a good candidate for it to, to capsize. Because yeah. there's no evidence of it being ran or There's anything. an anchor down here and all the lines. It's a really steep right there. Uh, Valerie Van Heest has written a great book on this. She, everything she writes is great, but uh, if you go you take a look at it. Yeah. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show is Nicole's wreck. Uh, has this been firmly identified? No, or only kind of no, 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 no. Okay. There's still debate about it. Okay. This is Nicole's mystery wreck. Right? Yes, 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 yes. So the story was this is in 2020. Um, during COVID, um, the double action boat, uh, there was sort of a new captain, Nicole, along with the old captain. <laughs> really old, really old captain Keith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when they were coming back from a dive, they had the sonar on and they spotted something on the bottom. And um, this is on a weekend, and Mike calls me up. Mike Peterson, who owns Cyberite in Scuba and Double Action, calls me up on a Tuesday and says, You know what? We, we may have found a new wreck on the sonar. We're going to go out there tomorrow. You want to come? And at first, I thought, No, I got first stuff. I got to do it. No, I can't. After about five seconds of thinking, I said, Yeah, I did. <laughs> and this was a cool experience. So we get out there. It's it's kind of really not that far off of Chicago. You can see Chicago really well. It's not that deep. It's fifty five feet. How far north is it? Well, it's shown right there. It's okay, it's near. It's near. It's near. It's, near, it's, it's on the way in the general direction of Evanston. Is it towards it's kind of about south? Of that south. Of that south. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So by the way, um, I have the GPS coordinates for all these, which I'm not going to really share. Some captains get sensitive about that, but that, my map is accurate. Um, anyway, so we get out there. go on a chart route there with the phone and capture it. So. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. yeah. So here we are, and we're getting ready for them to drop on where the sonar is sitting. Is this the first dive? Yeah. Okay. So there's Mike Peterson, who owns the right in on the left, and Moose yeah. up here, who doesn't own anything on the right. So, uh, he's got a dry suit on, he doesn't have anything else. Yeah, and you know, he's one of these complicated rebreather guys. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So, yeah. you know, the rest of us who are on open circuit, we're able to get in and splash right away. So, here's Bill Fisher down there, who all sorts of dive right in, and Mike down there, and I'm dropping down. And yeah, there's a rack down there, it's really cool. You know, so we're coming down on the rack, and, and you'll see Mike in a moment uh, tying on uh, the line. Um, I won't show the whole video because it's, it's just kind of swimming around there. There's Mike on the right, and he's tying on the line down there, and these four rebreather slots are still getting their gear out. Yeah. It takes them forever! Know. You know, it's ridiculous. We're out there, we're having a good time. But Bill and Mike are just kind of hanging around here, and I decide I'm going to swim around this thing and look around. And, and I go swimming around, I won't show the whole video, but I come across this big, massive anchor, which is pretty cool. You know, I see that. Some of them. Before there were marine protection laws, people would raise the anchor, <laughs> take it home and stuff. And so I thought that was pretty cool. And then I'm swimming along. So you were the first guy to see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, well, we know we probably know that this wreck had never been dived before. Because the other thing is I'm swimming along the wreck that I come across and I start screaming into my regulator, is the ship's wheel. Wow. And that you don't ever find those because they've been taken. Those are usually the first thing that gets taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can tell you, they don't take any other boat. These like days. Yeah. 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 They can actually time. confiscate the boat that you're diving off of. So yeah. the boat captain strongly discouraged me. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen people bring something up and the boat captain immediately throws it back in the water. But I came across the wheel and I was like, oh! And I immediately go back and get Bill and Mike. And then eventually these people on their fancy rebreathers come along. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the first, well, this is actually not the first picture, but it's the first picture with the person posing next to it. 
of, of the ship's wheel on this. That was pretty cool. So this, that was a good this is not that deep either. No, 55 feet. Yeah. It's a cool wrap. It's broken up as you can, well, I can show more of the video. Broken up, but a lot there. But there's a lot to see. Have they found actual artifacts, anything like, like, there's uh, like stovetops and stuff like that. I, I, I mean like uh, uh, plates or, or anything, personal belongings. No. They've never found anything like that. Do you know? No, if I remember right though, there was a couple of cases. I don't know whatever happened to those. Can you open them? Were there a couple of crates or something? I know I Jeff Ranos wanted to see my pictures of the first five to see what were moved since then. Yeah, because I remember, I still remember on it, I've seen some big sort of chests that they've got, like pirate chests, but like, I don't remember that. You know, maybe I missed them or something. Yeah, this this gives you an idea. If you ever meet Yosef, you now know not to trust Yosef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprise it took you that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's it's a very accessible wrap. It's truly neat. It's a lot of fun, and it hasn't totally been figured out what it is. There's a separate group called the, U, U, um, the Underwater Archaeological Society. You ask. Yeah, yeah, you ask, and they're still in the process of figuring out what it is. We have uh, someone who's come in. Hey. You've been here before. Yeah. What is your name? Edgar. 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 Good to see you. Yeah. Anyways, that's a cool one. And it's easy peasy. Nice easy wrap. The next one is the Straits of Mac, which is another purpose <coughs> of some crack. Mm -hmm. Dean. Uh, it was built in 1929. It was uh, built to um, uh, ferry cars back and forth along the Straits of Mackinac, the little spot there, before they built the bridge. Of course, as soon as the bridge was built, which is in 57, it didn't have that job anymore. So it hauled freight for a little while, and it was finally uh, uh, commissioned, decommissioned. So it was put out of service in 68. I, I don't know the whole story about how it changed hands back and forth. You know, usually they, they sell these things for scrap, but this they didn't with this. I know there was a dive club in Wisconsin that worked for quite a while trying to get it sunk in Wisconsin. Uh, but it was, it was kind of complicated for them to do that. So it ended up uh, being in the, under the control of a couple people in Chicago, and uh, they spent time organizing people to, to clean this up, and then it was intentionally sunk off of near, near Evanston. It's about, as, about 70, probably 70 feet is probably the deepest you're going to find it. I heard 85. You heard 85, really? 87, yeah. Yeah, that's a little like problem. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah. Anyway, this is just a picture of them actually sinking. They actually put a camera. You can get a, I think, on YouTube. Uh, they actually put a camera on board the boat, and you can watch all the water coming in as it sinks. Mm -hmm. Then they yeah. retrieve the camera and they, they put it out. So, so Jim cool. Gentile, who used to have a Jim Gentile and Hank Feeney. Yeah, yeah. The, he told me a story that when they were trying to get the permitting for intentionally sinking this. One of the things they had as an objection was was it will obstruct fish migration patterns. And he was like, the fish will swim around and are over it. You know, it's like it's big. The fish will know what to do. Yeah. 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 I still remember Jim saying that. It's a characteristic quote. So. Anyway, it's a it's a neat boat. Um, you know, it's one of the most the popular boats. Yeah, to super popular in the Chicago, Chicago area. area. Uh, because yes. I remember a trip back from. Oh, I have some pictures. So yes, yes, yeah. you'll see in a moment. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I think I have it with the Wells Bird. Charles, I have it with the Wells Bird. So I'll look at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is Carlos, Al Carlos Alva, who I hate because he dies. It's perfect. When he dies. <laughs> I just hate it. Who is it? Who is it? Carlos, Carlos Alva. Alva. Oh, oh, yeah. Carlos. Yeah, I hate him. Yeah. Um, here he is on uh, the Mac. Um, here's Yosef. Everybody hates Carlos. Carlos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah. He's miserable. Yeah. Uh, Nobody hates <laughs> Joseph. Nobody hates Joseph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you ski with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and it's got a spot where you can drop in. This is my wife, kind of dropping in, um, going down some ladder, and doing some interior. So it's easy penetration dive. For those who like to penetrate rocks, that's totally a specialty. Um, you know, I like to keep my dry suit nice and clean. Some people feel like they're What a waste. Dead. What a waste of a dry suit. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. And this it's is coming up. Yeah, yeah. Wasted. I had one dive, by the way, where there was a Scottish guy visiting on Jim Gentile's boat. He jumps in and one of the slippers comes off. Um, and uh, I, I decide that you had this experience with uh, the White Star Press. Yes, the White Star Press. Yeah, yeah. But this time, I, I, I was buddying up with him. I take a sighting down the line to know which direction the wreck is, and I drop straight down. 
And I was amazed that it was right there where we got to the bottom. And then I just swam back to the record and spin. All was good. Yeah. Okay, the next one is Wells Bird, and then we'll get to our story because yeah. um, the uh, it, it, Jim Gentile sold his boat, but he used to run charters or he would do, go out on Wednesday nights to the summer fireworks in Chicago. And so one one night, a couple of us, um, I think I'll show the wreck first and then we'll get to this one. Yeah, it's out. Um, uh, but a couple of us had misadventures with that. But this is um, a nice, easy one. It's only 35 feet, but it's really neat, old wooden wreck. And Dean, you want to say some history? Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of history. It was built in 1873. It sank with all hands May 20th, 1883. And it's kind of a shame because you're on the boat and landed right there. Yeah, yeah. And and, and it sunk. It had its master sticking out. Um, it has but, these dead eyes? For yeah, that's the, that's the thing about it. It has these dead eyes. That you, you don't see them a lot. It's in very good condition for being so shallow. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's definitely worth a dive. And again, I hate Carlos. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but this was a three-masted schooner, and uh, they even, they were able to identify it because they actually were able to find the number, the, 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 the de a, a number on the boat in one of the hatches. I've never seen okay. the number, okay. but uh, Keith says it was there. Okay, that they found it. That they were able to positively identify. It. And as Joseph points out, by the way, these are the quad horses. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I hate Carlos Club. Um, Charles? Charles! Uh, I hate him a little bit, but not as much as Carlos. Um, <laughs> do you want to say anything about the woodwork on it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a, neat, it's a really neat wreck. It's only 35 feet. Really easy peasy dive. Great wreck. There's my wife on it. Um, there's Richard Kessel, sort of you looking know, mysterious on the other side of the world. Looking through a scupper. Yeah, yeah. And Rat Descobie, a friend of ours, yeah. the chicken of Shane. Um, that used to be on the. Is that still on the Yeah, okay. I don't that Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, and Rat certainly deserves a chicken of Shane. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's won it a few times, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, anyway, so one I mean, you jump in the water and got your weight, so somebody like, oh, okay. that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Right. that's why you get it. <laughs> so this is supposed to start with the saying, it's a, it was a dark and stormy night, you know, like the classic. <laughs> but it was actually a very clear and pleasant night. Um, these were the gang of us out there on Jim Gentile's boat, and we had done our second dive. He would do these Wednesday night dives at the fireworks, you know, so you'd come back in, you'd watch the fireworks in the water. This is from a different trip we it was kind of cool, you know, it was really cool from, from the Navy Pier, yeah, right, right? Except this night, we're coming back, and, you know, the, there's maybe a light out on the breakwater, or maybe not, maybe he's not paying attention, I don't know. We're cruising along in towards where the fireworks are going to be, and BAM! Well, actually, he goes, SHIT! He <laughs> wants the props in reverse, stalls the engines, and we go, BAM! Right? Yeah. You know, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, so so then we're like just the break wall just appeared out of nowhere out of yeah, the dark. Yeah, out of the dark because we're in the dark, right, right. And you know, we're kinda like, oh well, that was a little bit interesting. <laughs> and then uh, you know, we kind of look at the boat and he said, Well, I got a crack up here. It was a catamaran. Um sort of a weird catamaran. It didn't look like a catamaran from the side, but you'll see a picture of it in a second. And it cracks the uh, very prow of the starboard side. He had an inboard engine and he pulled the catamaran. And maybe we shouldn't wait for the fireworks. Maybe we should go right back to the harbor. Or we're going back to the harbor. And we're starting to list. Not hey, list. Hey, hey, the bilge, the bilge oh, we're, we're yeah. all manning the bilges. They have an electric pump. We're manning manual pumps. We're just like, <laughs> we're and, watering with everything we have. Yes, yes. And of course, none of us, none of us have the presence of mind to say, oh, we should put on life jackets. <laughs> none of us. <laughs> You know, so nobody thought of it. Nobody thought of it. They had to be CDs, but they need like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. No, they were off at this point. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're coming in, and we did. We we are really listening. The starboard engine goes out because it's got flooded by water, and we make it into Burnham Harbor. And his slip is over by the planetarium. We decide we're not going that far. We're pulling right up into the little slip and scrape the bottom. Yeah, it just oh. settled. It just settled up. Yeah, we made it. You know, we made it. <laughs> so this is a picture afterwards um, when we're sort of unloading our gear, and you know, you can see Jim and someone else checking out the boat. Did you tip him? Huh? Did you tip him? We did. 
That's a nice guy. I think he's going to have to go. What do you want to add to this, Carl? Now, when we were moments with the same. We were oh, you know, close. Anyone, anyone who's seen a boat sink, it always goes slowly at first. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> and I think we were right at the tipping point because when we got the boat ramp there, it just kind of settled on the bottom. Yeah, of the yeah. Ramp, you know? yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. And when we were deep watering as fast as we could, and oh, it's interesting because at first when we hit the wall, oh, it's not too bad, it's not too bad. And then I forget who jumped in and looked at it, but it was just like, no, I jumped in. I think we just, or somebody, somebody looked over. Someone hung over the side. Yeah, hung over the bow. But, but it was like on the Titanic, it didn't look too bad. Yeah. <laughs> but it was amazing how much water we were taking. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, that it's really fun. Wherever you are. Yeah, so this, that was an interesting Are you going to tell your other story later on? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. This is actually the first record I ever did in um, Lake Michigan, which was a Chicago scuba meetup trip. Where we're gonna, I know Eric and Dean and Amistek and Beth were there. There was one other person who I don't really recognize. But yeah, we went out on the Dale, 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 Dale Bennett. Dale Bennett's Dale boat. Bennett. Yeah, which runs at about four miles an hour. Five. <laughs> five, five. Five. Okay, okay, yeah. And St. Mary's really lot. far out there. So this is a long trip. And and again, I had done three dives in a dry suit. I was in a rented dry suit, and this record's 105 feet. I wouldn't recommend it. It would turn out fine, but I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. I would get a little more experience before you go out there. Yeah. We must have done two on the Mackinac. Yeah, we did two on the Mackinac and then one on the Finn Seeker. Which yeah. was sort of a, yeah. someone's speedboat or something. Right? Right. Yeah. Anyway, it was a pretty day going out there. Uh, we get out from St. Mary. This is actually on another trip. I didn't have a good camera at that time. Um, John Milburn. Um, and yeah, as you can see, this one's kind of broken up. It's a bit far out there. But anyway, it was my first eye, so I had to keep it. See kind of the ribs of this. Anything you want to say about it? Well, it, this boat was built in 1848, and it sank. It's a two-masted schooner, and it, um, seven people's seven lives were lost when it sank. But the, wasn't didn't get a lot of attention at the time because it happened to sink at on September 8, 1860, which was the same day that the Lady Elgin. Oh, as which I think is the name. Oh, which was here. Right. right. So it, it it sort of got lost its place in the no. newspapers no. by by that one. Right. You're thinking of the oh, you're thinking of East, East yeah, East, I mean Eastlands. East yeah, Eastlands East in the river. Oh, yeah, 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 that was a fine yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so it was cool to get out there. Kind of broke up though. Lady Elgin. Lady Elgin. Uh, I don't think there's many pictures because it's not super sneaky. It, it's, it's very broken up. It broke up as it came down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't show that to the um, Lady Elgin Foundation. Right. Okay. Uh, they'll be mad at me. I don't, I don't see any wrecks there. You're just diving over the Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but actually, there, there's, there's two. Uh, there's boilers to see. There's, yes. there's, there's decking to see, which is actually it's more intact than I would, would, would thought when I went on it. This is one of the most is that with the rope that goes out one of the It goes it goes out it the anchor, the rope that it, attached around a yeah. rock out of the middle of nowhere uh, with rock. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a plus size rock. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, big, yeah. big rock. Yeah. And it, it stopped whatever was floating in the water that, that it was attached to. So um so there's a lot of decking. There is actually more to see. I, I, last time I was there, I was I was surprised that there was more to see than I remember. Okay. But, but there's also uh, boilers and, and anchor. There's also debris fields. This thing split all apart. It was built in 1851, and again at sink in September 8th, 1860. It was a passenger side wheel uh, st steamer, a very up, you know, high class boat. Um, it, and there was there's some history to it. Uh, and back, and this was before the Civil War. So the state of Wisconsin had a governor who was an abolitionist. He, he was very seriously thinking of having Wisconsin secede from the Union because uh, Wisconsin, uh, the before United the States War. Was, was a slave, slave country, and, and he was seriously thinking about that. Now, this is before the National Guard, so they had a, 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 um, a system of militias that took place in most of the states. Uh, there was about four militias, I think, in Wisconsin. One of the militias was an Irish militia, and 
Um, the governor was not at all uh, confident that if he decides to seek from the union that they would support. Hmm. So he had them basically decommissioned, had their, their guns taken away from them. But they didn't want it. They did not want to disband. So what they did is that they had a a, a big uh, uh, fundraiser in Chicago, and uh, Stephen Douglas was supposed to speak there, but he never showed up. But uh, a big fundraiser, and the boat ended up with a lot more people on it when it left than when it came in. It was going. It, they had their party. I think they had a parade. They they had a, they had bought some some arms. Which were found on the boat later, and, and, and swords and things like that, because I think they had a parade and they had their guns and everything. And um, it was a it, it it left, and it was at nighttime, a uh, storm, very stormy weather, and it got rammed by a schooner uh, named the Augusta, rammed right into the center of the thing. Um, the Augusta wasn't damaged that bad; it went away. I guess it thought this big boat probably is okay too. I'm not that clear. Yeah, but it, in fact, it's split apart completely, and pieces of it went all over the place, sank. And um, there is an estimation that there may be anywhere from 400 to 700 people on the boat. Whoa. That's that's the range that they're wow. guessing may have been on the boat, wow. out of which 100 or 170 survived. Wow. So this was one. It's a couple miles off. Yeah, it, it, it's not all that deep. Oh, it was under. 125 feet, I don't think I've ever gotten close to 125 feet. Maybe uh, if you're down here on the bottom, I think you did. Maybe. <laughs> I've had a good chance. For sure. It seems, it seems deep. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. There's, yeah, oh, there okay, is okay. a part. So the yeah. boilers dropped out at some point. Yeah. And then the rest of the ship kind of drifted. And then it eventually wrapped around this big rock. The, uh, the, the anchor was dragging this whole time and eventually wrapped around this random Rock. stone. It's probably as yeah. it's taller than the sea. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it's actually about a quarter mile apart between them. So okay. okay. Boilers are in one spot, and the rest of the wreck is in another spot. You know, Not everybody drowned right, right away. A lot of people ended up in the water. A lot of them died being slammed into the rocks on the shore. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, students at Northwestern University went out. One was, became very famous for that. They were rescuing people that were, that were in the water. So it was a, a, one of the biggest disasters in the Great Lakes. Uh, it was, and I might be wrong on the depth here, right? There were, I thought I checked, you know, I did a lot of copy and paste. Yeah. And I may have made a mistake. I, I got here at 55 feet is what I have. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I'm wrong there. Yeah, yeah my notes say 55. Yeah. Uh, so um, it was discovered by Harry Zeich in 1989. And of course, we talked about already the uh, Antiquities Act uh, that has basically turned over the a, uh, abandoned ship that's, uh, that's embedded in the, in the lake, lakes to the states. And um, Harry Zeich was a, a salvager. He came, uh, he found the boat, and he claimed possession of it. And what he did was uh, he went to the insurance company that insured the boat, which was still in existence, and asked, can I have the deed of the boat? And they gave it to him. So then he says it wasn't abandoned. It wasn't, it wasn't abandoned. They still had control of it. Uh, and I, he spent 11 years in court fighting for possession of the boat, and he won. So uh, he's a, it was a character of his own. He, he's, he's died since then. It's now uh, transferred over to the Lady Elgin Foundation. Technically, you're not supposed to dive it uh, without his permission. And he says, I've never given permission. Uh, well, I've heard different things about the attitude now about it, but people have been dying it anyway. The best book written about this is by, again, Valerie Van Heest. She wrote a fantastic book. It gives a complete history of the area era, and this book. It, it's very interesting. You should pick it up. It's called Lost on the Lady Elgin by Valerie Van Heest. Oh, yeah. Oh, a thousand children were orphaned as a result of this. Oh, yeah. All right, my thing's a little less uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know if any of you guys have heard of a show called Drain the Oceans. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, so they did one off our boat. Yeah. It was a safety diver on that. Yeah. And They uh, actually drained the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we went out there, and um, it was like, I don't want to hijack the talk, but it was obviously yeah. fun. You can still find it on whatever streaming platform. Sure. Yeah. So it's out there. And I, unfortunately, I don't remember the episode I had. I thought about it right oh, cool. next week. There's one in Chicago Rex, I think. 
Yeah. No, it's more like it's not even Great Lakes. It's in a bigger. Oh, it's oh, one part of the episode, but um, but it was funny because you know they were trying to drama fight. Oh right, right, right. And right. they're like, like yeah, they're like you have to act like you know. Wait, is that a boiler? Even though we know. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. And they're all from England. All the, the producer and the director and everything. But yeah, it was very. Very interesting. They, they they were gonna get me on as a uh, as a contracted person for a dollar, so I could get a credit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for whatever legal reason they couldn't. So oh. that's my one shot of fame. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you're just You'll be one of those names scrolling quickly across yeah. the screen. Right? Yeah. 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 So this just gives you an idea that there could be some fantastic <laughs> days out there in the lake. You can see the water's like glass. You can see the mooring line going down to the wreck there under the water. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, yeah, I think it's always like this. And this is Bill Loesch's boat. Unfortunately, he sold it to stop being a tourist. Yeah, he was a jerk. But I dove with him on the Milwaukee uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, you did? When I did this. Yeah, yeah. Really? yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, Wisconsin. Bill Loesch, who owned that boat, um, had his boat in Winter Harbor, and he would do almost only and nothing but Wisconsin, because it was a short haul out from Winter Harbor, and it's a great route. And so here we are, a couple of us going out there. Um, again, I didn't look up the name. I could probably figure it out from a blog if there wasn't one of the right. But um, yeah, Abhishek uh, Key Park is at Purdue. Abhishek's at Northwestern and me. And you know, another one of those really rough days out there on the lake. You really have to feel sorry for us in these conditions. And you come down, and there's the bow of the Wisconsin. You want to say something while I kind of run through pictures? Please? Well, yeah. Okay. So it was. Um, it's a passenger. Iron. It's a passenger and freight steamer. So it did both. It was part of the Goodrich Line, which is a very well known line in, in the in, uh, in the area. And it uh, was built in 1881, and it sank in. October 29th, 1929. Yeah, yeah, so stock market crashed on the 28th and crashed more on the 29th. Yeah. And so. And same with the Milwaukee car ferry, right? Yes. So, yes. so no one heard about it. No, I think the car ferry was a week before. The car ferry was oh, 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. so. Uh, anyway, it probably didn't get quite as much publicity because everybody was concerned about their money. Um, but the nine lives were lost out of, uh, out of 68 that were on the boat. So it wasn't a, the, as big a disaster as it could have been. They were quite a few were rescued. But well, has, some of these wrecks go around the burbots, which are incredibly tranquil or non-concerned or stupid fish. I don't know. Yeah. Pick your favorite adjective. How big are they? They're big. There you see someone one next to someone. He doesn't care. The person's no, you can practically pick them up. I'm not sure who that is in the picture. He's missing a regulator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. he's, he's a breath hold Yeah, yeah. He's a yeah. breath hold type. Um, anyway, continue. You need well, it's, 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 it's oh. a lot of cargo in there. Did you do you have a picture of the, of the car? Yeah, so um, this is kind of going down inside, uh, and you can go inside a little bit. Uh, I know people have swum through the whole thing, like Andy Moore. Um, yeah, I, it's I, it's up the window. yeah, it's collapsed a bit over the years, so it's less accessible inside, but it does have, this is not a very good picture, but it's the only one I am. Here's the wheel of an old Packard that's on the starboard side of the board. No, port side, port side. The big hole in the port side. Yeah, you can swim right in there. It's, it's easy to get in. You don't, you'll, get, you'll see the, the entrance right there. So you, yeah. you can see a car right away if you know what you're looking at. Yeah. And like I said, I don't usually dive with strobes. Um, so this is someone else's, uh, you know, like. Joseph uh, has a great story about his first dive on it. Oh, he yeah. does? Was that the Wisconsin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that actually, that was my first. That was your first lake dive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is my first ever lake dive. I was one of those inexperienced lake divers, and um, this is the 130 feet. I'm the fact, the only reason they let me on was because um, someone called Greg Such. Oh, oh, um, Mike Peterson's dad. Oh, yeah. Greg Such right. said, "This guy has no experience, right. and you can get run." He said, "You can take it because Greg didn't want to take on the dive." So, but anyways, everything was fine, but I went down and now uh, the regulator that I just bought from Mary Bouchard, or whatever her name is. Boucher. Yeah. Boucher, sorry, yeah. Uh, free flow. Mm -hmm. And um, so, okay, we didn't panic. I was with the buddy. We came right to each other. We did everything right. We're leaving our way up and then it is free flow. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's really strange and interesting because I was there with Shannon Sangstone, who's actually the founder of this group. Uh, oh. and, and she went down with, it with me, mm -hmm. and she free flowed. 
Right. So it's I kind of come up with her and yeah. share it. How many people have had a free flow? Okay, not fun. Yeah. Oh, I've had free. I had my BC free flow. Oh, that's okay. almost scary. That's 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 scary. scary. Yeah. And cold water. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So on one of the dives there, I'm there, and you know, the, these group of friends here from Chicago Scuba Meetup are very genuine and nice, and I'm very, right. you know, considerate. And so I'm getting up on the boat, and they're saying, stop, stand right there, don't move, we got to take some pictures of you. And I'm like, what the heck? So this is Eric Vanderick, who's very considerate and, <laughs> and all of that. And he's taking pictures of me and laughing. And I'm like, what the heck, you know? Uh, well, here's the reason why. Um, he had clipped uh, some truck nuts on me while we were back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this kind of passed around for a while, and here's me going to that. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen this picture before. Yeah. <laughs> so watch how we back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, there I am. Right. So Eric, you know, Chris, you know, turn this way, turn this way. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Winter Harbor is kind of interesting because there are, you know, there's a bunch of boats there. This boat just really impressed me. Maybe that's the reason the owner intended. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of a lot of power on a not so very big boat. Yeah. yeah. And so they have this bar there called Tropics, which is great. Um, a traditional place to end at the Wisconsin dive when Bill Loach had his boat. And one of the things that, oh, and here's a bunch of us there. Uh, so there's Bath there, for example, Charles there, um, Bill Oost, the former boat owner. Um, and the Tropics has sort of an interesting way of labeling their bathrooms. Uh, <laughs> which is kind of anatomically correct, you know? Um, but also, where are the process people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, next one, the Lumberman. I don't have many pictures of that, and again, here's Dean. Is this one allowed to show a picture of you? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. perfectly fine. This was discovered by Dan Johnson, and he's been out there quite a few times, so he doesn't mind people diving in. There's Jeff. Okay, yeah, and Jeff always looks like he's going to come there. Yeah, he has good trim. Yeah, Th yeah. This boat was built in 1862. It sank in April 7th, 1893. Um, nobody died on this boat. They climbed up the mast. This is in oh, 70 wow. feet of water. Wow. They climbed up the mast and hung on to the mast until somebody came by and picked them up. Wow. Yeah. So but was, this is in 70 feet of water, so those masts are high. You know, well, yeah, what time of year was it? Uh, yeah, April. It oh, April. So no, it's, so it's early, cold. early yeah. season. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a um, uh, double centerboard, which is unusual. So there's oh. a centerboard here and a centerboard there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, next one is the number six dredge, which was for dredging sand, and you'll see in a second. And it's a boat that was sort of a barge with the crane on top that actually flipped over while being towed in the storm. Yeah, it was being towed in uh, May 23rd, 1956. It was built in 1912. It was unregistered and had never been inspected. I don't know any of that caused the heading to do with this. It capsizing or sinking or anything like that, but it was a structure as much as it was a, a boat, yeah, you know. So. Yeah. Again, be towed. But here it's got this big honking giant wheel, which is really cool. It's my white wheel. Um, it's got uh, because it's upside down. It's got this stuff sort of all this uh, scaffolding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real easy to get through. Yeah, yeah. So it's a great beginner penetration zone. So here's Beth there. With their bifocals. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, here's Toby over there, looking clean before he gets back in the cold room and gets nice. all dirty. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. Really yeah, yeah. Not a waste. Yeah, and this is kind of going up. It, it's weird, you know. There's a ladder that you go, you swim the opposite direction, right? You're actually when the thing was before it sank, you would actually be going down. Right. But now you're going up. Right. Right. It's yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's and then, like, like right at the top. Awesome. What's that? That's why people get lost. In that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's disorienting. Yeah, disorienting. And then you kind of get up that ladder and ah! Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the plastic still there. And then you know, again, it's really nutty people go. You don't have a picture the of the of the bucket. Oh, I have one. Yeah. Oh, I should have put it on there. That's yeah, it's really, a big bucket. It's a really cool one. Right. You done again? Oh, again. I, I have done it. Yeah, probably ten times. Never before. Yeah. Yeah. Good enough. 
train on them. Train yeah. Them, a lot of rough diapers. Yeah, yeah. It's a great one. And not that deep, but it was that 80 feet? 60, 60 feet. That's feet. wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. about 75 feet. Yeah. It's, yeah. If you bring it down, yeah, 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 right. right. You kind of like to em embellish. Oh, uh, yeah. again, it's just some copy paste and then find check all these things. Yeah. Okay, the next one, Princess on Fly. This is prop. I heard it said that this is the most popular shipwreck that I have been in this year. It's very close to Milwaukee. Um, you'll see here, this is the boy, and there you can see Milwaukee in the background. It's really nice and close. It's about, I think, 85 feet, which is sort of burrowing to the sand. And you want to say something about it? Yeah, it was built in, it, this is a Dutch freighter. It, so it's a, you call it salty because it was meant to be in the ocean, but ended up here with carrying freight and stuff. It was built in 1948, and it's saying on October 14th, 1954, the year I was born. Um, and the way it sunk, it was uh, the, a tug was towing a barge from the Sinclair Oil Company, and the freighter ran right into the towing cables. So it went down. It, there were several attempts to salvage, actually to raise it, but it was declared by the Coast Guard to be a, a Hazard to navigation because it was had, it was too close to the surface. So they put out a um, yeah. These bags here, by the way, are from the salvage effort. So they bags, pumps to take it up. Yeah. There's but some, there's even some barrels down there. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, they they uh, put out uh, a call for contracts to people who would uh, take the uh, that was me in that one picture too. That it took uh, to. Oh, that's um, my wife. That's your wife, but that picture you showed oh, yeah, yeah. the crow's nest. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Um, they they uh, took out a contract, uh, at, at, asked people to bid on uh, making it so it was safe for navigation. So they, they expected they had to remove a bunch of a boat or something like that. And, uh, Max Nola was one of the most famous divers at the time. He actually uh, broke a, a world deep uh, dive record in, I think, the Thirties or something, uh, and in in Lake Michigan, he went down like nine hundred feet or something, and he broke a record. Uh, but uh, he he bid fifty thousand dollars to, and he would get ownership of the boat. He'd have all the salvage rights and everything like that, and if he would make it safe for navigation, he went down, saw a ladder that was uh, a gang gangway that was sticking up like this, removed the gangway. Took, and, and then and then claimed by his his fifty thousand yeah. dollars, and the the coast guard um, tried to uh, challenge him on that. Said it was too easy, and he said you didn't say it had to be hard, right? And, and he won in court. Right. So he had he had ownership of the boat for a while, but eventually it, it, it left his. Uh, oh. uh, yes. Now it's a boat in the Yes. Yeah. So a real easy dive. This is you know the kind of windows that lead down to the ocean. easy dive, but people have killed been killed. Yeah, people have been trapped inside. Yeah, How would you be anyone else? Extremely one? complicated. Yeah, yeah. I've know. I've heard three. I've also heard five. Yeah, I've, I've heard, heard three. Three what? You, people die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. yeah. Do you want yeah. to say yeah. anything? And then it's, it also has the other half of the history. I don't know if you need to read yeah. this or not. Is that it actually sunk prior to this mm -hmm. oh, yesterday? Yeah. Oh yeah. So as it was being built. Scuttling situation. Oh yeah. They they sang it purposely. They, they right. had partially built. They sunk it as the Nazis were coming in and mm -hmm. right. right. eventually finished building it and then brought it here. So uh, it's, it's actually it's sunk twice. Wow. So I was gonna ask what you were saying earlier about the I don't it did see some sort of air quote service in the yeah. yeah. so yeah. World War II, so I wonder if that would qualify as uh, I don't know if it actually <coughs> sort of a merchant marine or something. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. Also, anyway, it's a fan. You should you should mention because it's on its side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's at an angle. It really looks like a wreck when yes. you come down and yes. take a look at it. And that's one of those boats you can easily go into it, but then you turn around to leave, you can't find the door because yeah. the door is up there. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if you that's don't like, penetrate, which yeah. is what I usually do, great wreck, lots of sea. I've done probably 15 dive dives. Every time it's fun. Yeah. Great. One time I went with these guys, and they were all penetrating, and I I just kind of sat outside. I, I could never handle a wreck. 
swoop around the yeah. cell phone. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's the name we rubbed it, the name off. The yeah, yeah. It's still yeah. on it and things like that. There's a, there's a couple of plaques on it with memorials and things like that. So, yeah. It's yeah. Great. It's fantastic. Great. So, again, start out with like the Wellsburg the Imperial Service, 35 feet. Do this one like 89.5 feet. Actually, the wreck starts at about 50. 50 or 40. Yeah, 50, yeah, 40, yeah. 40, 45. Yeah, 45, yeah, 45. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I've dived in, you know, with a bunch of these people here a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, this is Ed Howe getting back on the Molly. Um, this is uh, Yitka Hanakova owns this boat, which runs out of Milwaukee, which is real popular with a lot of divers. Um, she's a super yeah. experienced diver herself. She's like, you know, a 300 foot rebreather diver. Um, yeah, so she's great. And she has a dog on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and then we go in, you know, the Milwaukee Harbor, and there's a pizza place that actually has shipwreck photos by a guy named Cal. Uh, uh, Cal 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 Yeah, Cal 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 at that time, she trailer her in the time. But um, there's another couple boats that run out of this area. Yeah. Okay, this one is mysterious. Yeah. yeah. No one really knows how it got there, according to what I know. Yitka doesn't yeah, know. Is. Dean doesn't know. No. If they don't know, no one knows. But it's this construction structure that's, a, I think, about 145 at the very at the sand, something like that. Anyone know? It's about that. Yeah, it's, okay. te it's technical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and it could be a recreational dive for sure. Yeah, yeah. See the this is about 100, I think. It's about 95. When you hit the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've done it with you know yeah. several people here. Um, and it's kind of a neat dive. It's a man-made structure, but you know for construction, no one knows about it. About how it got there. The, the, the guess is that maybe it was some kind of scaffolding for a building and uh, water intake. But it, it obviously wasn't being built here because it's way too deep. And that maybe after they finished with its use, they didn't have any use for it anymore, so they may have towed it out and just sank it. Because yeah. sinking and scuttling boats and sinking trash you don't want anymore was pretty common practice mm -hmm. once yeah. upon a time. Yeah. A lot of the wrecks that we know about were scuttling. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's close to Milwaukee, it's a neat dive. Kind of it's it's as of last week. It's Bowie. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I saw she posted on Facebook about it. Yeah. Did you help? No. Not that. I took all the other ones off last fall, but not this one. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Emba. Have you you've done the Emba? Not yet. Not really? Yeah. 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 So I did this with Ras and Jeff Rouse. Mm -hmm. um, these two. This and one. it's got the cell phone structure. So this was. Um, built and used for a while, and then the company was sort of sick of it and had and towed it out to sea. It was a schooner barge. It was turned into a schooner barge. And AMBA stands for the Employee Mutual Benefit Association. Yes. So it was owned by a company and they called it that. Um, and uh, it was scuttled in 1932. It was built in 1890. It scuttled in 1932. So uh, okay. And this is tech This is right at my tech limit of 100. So here's Raph and Jeff Ross. They're both on rebreather of a poor old open circuit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool arrangement. It's, 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 that's at the bow, it's kind of split in the bottom. Um, and it's got these sort of uh, arches along the side of the bow, which I'm not quite sure what the those hoggy arches? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the boat that much. Yeah, yeah, well. Anyway, it was a super scenic dive and it allows people to use laser traction. You know, tra tractor beams to pull people in towards the <laughs> That's what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's the rudder on it. And then uh, this one, uh, the mooring line was kind of rotted out, so we had to drop a grappling hook on it. And here's Jeff Rouse picking up the grappling hook at the end of the dive. And then at the top of the rotted mooring line, there's about 60 feet as I'm switching to my deeper model. I have a free float. Yeah, I'll rather that. Yeah. But, you know. Only oh, yes. yeah, no yeah. yeah. um, at yeah. 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 St. Albans is very close by. Do you have any? Uh, I don't have a lot. It was built in 1868. It was sunk by ice. 
It was January 30th, uh, 1881. No lives were lost on this. Okay, okay. So they were all arrested. There's the boiler on it. And here's just on the lake bottom, we're at exploring the lake bottom. And you know, this is part of the cool thing is on this shipwreck right You feel like you're on the moon, you know? You're out there in this weird environment, and it's just it's really a cool experience. Yeah, uh, I just really like this point of wrap down there on the bottom. Um, you can kind of see the lake bottom sometimes has kind of these clay layers. So it's not really mud, but kind of a hard clay a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, there's kind of swimming along in it. There's this mechanism sort of in the middle of the It looks like, like wheels for something, some car yeah, or something. Anyway, it's a really scenic raft. It's really cool. So raft is very happy at the end of those so coming back into the Milwaukee Harbor. So he didn't have the chicken exchange for that. Okay. Um, Milwaukee Harbor. Okay. The first time I went to dive this was with Chicago Scuba Meetup. Who was it that got the nice turn? Was it you? Uh, I gotta give it a try. <laughs> There's this one guy, Dan Collins, this was a former yeah, yeah. seal or something, and he's going, yeah, yeah, speed it up, get it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and the rest of them are kind of hanging on for dear life. Yeah, they, he goes fast. That boat goes fast. Dan Crane? No, 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 it was one of the two bands. It was, it was uh, Alex point. was on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, but Collins, Collins had, they were almost the one of his yeah, our former Navy SEAL. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we did have a former uh, yes. uh, Navy rescue guy. Right, with his wife. Yes. Who was not happy to be there. No, yeah. it transpired. But Dan Collins was going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. I remember looking back at Abishak, who's sitting by the stern back here, and he was sitting on the bottom of the boat, and he was up to his armpits in the water. So there's a lot of water in the boat. We but get out there. Like 35 knots. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they go 30. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So it's a boiler type boat, so oh, I can't say, you know, it's all foam, right? You know, the, the inside the boat. So we get out there and it's tying into the wreck. And we get kind of sideways the waves. There's a lot of water in the boat. And you know, there's a phenomenon called resonance. And so uh, you know, the boat kind of rocks it sideways in a wave. The gunnels dip down a little bit, water comes in. It sloshes to the other side, a little more water comes in. Slosh, you know. And I, my recollection is about four waves or so. That was great. Yeah, something like that. It was very quick. What would you say? Uh, yeah, it was, it was about the same, and my recollection is that I was standing in the boat, and I was also standing in Lake Michigan, and that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I decided it was just better in Lake Michigan and not on the boat. You know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So this is a picture after, <laughs> before the dive. Um, and so this Bill King, this, these are not my photos. Bill King had a camera in his pocket. There's drop water on the legs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's a body float. You see the left feet of the body. Yeah. The so one guy actually whacked, Bill King whacked his head and had a small concussion. Oh, Another guy is actually on the way out. Um, like he had a airway fracture in his yeah, yeah, like a percussive two. fracture. Yeah, just from bracing himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kramer, two. two. I think he was one of the ten. Yeah. Yeah. He fractured, he fractured his leg yeah. on the way out. Yeah, yeah. just from bracing himself against the rock waves. So here we are, flipping a little flipped over. Um, there's uh, the owner of the boat, um, who then said, oh, I can't get my cell phone wet, I can't get my EPIRB wet, it will, it will like not EPIRB. work. Like, yeah, so EPIRB is an emergency personal something where you lose it. Mm -hmm. And when they get wet, they trigger a uh, emergency signal. Yeah. I can't get it wet, it won't work anymore. That's how they trigger. That's no point. Yeah, yeah, so you know, here we are, the Coast Guard finally came about 15 minutes later. Only one person has a life jacket on. Yeah, well, two. Oh, two. Yeah, the motor was important. 
By the way, um, oh, on this picture, um, <laughs> I think that's I think that that things got really bad. <laughs> yeah, things got really bad. I didn't use Photoshop on this picture at all. Nah. No. So anyway, that was an interesting day. You know, we finally get back on shore from the Coast Guard. I had to borrow some. So besides that, Chris, what about the rat? Yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. Anyway, anyone else want to? Who's there? Want to add anything? Well, our dive gear went to the rat. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> my my uh, my computer said it be ten hours. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people talk? Unfortunately, he was heavily insured. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, and, and Dean, to answer your earlier question, we did not take the time. <laughs> <laughs> we did, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this whole bench broke off of all our gear down to the bottom. This was like 120 feet from the But they did retrieve a lot of gear. Yep. They got yep. all that. Oh, yeah, pretty yeah, much all pretty much all. all. It was also kind of a humbling yeah, experience. Yeah. If you want to be scared, Total up what all the diet gear you have costs <laughs> in the place, and you'll be horrified. We all did that. Yeah. Um, anyway, so this is the Milwaukee Car Ferry, which is just a super cool rat. And I'm actually going to play their YouTube video um, in sections. So there are people who do this thing called photo. Oh, 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 oh sorry. They do photogrammetry where they take like thousands of photos and then um, use software to stitch them together to kind of give you the uh, a pseudo 3D view of all of these photos together. And I thought I had downloaded this a little bit for this. And if not, oh, oh, oops. But um, there's this beautiful 3D model of it. And I'm going to give it another second. Give it a few seconds. I'll see that. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I paid for the YouTube premium to be able to download. It's not starting. I'll, show you. Okay. Um, I'll go back here. Okay. Anyway, there's this 3D model of it. It's really cool. And one of the things you'll note is that the wheelhouse sort of blew off in that same. Um, and there's a back gate, which is all bent in back here. This is a railroad car. Yes, yeah, so okay. Uh, it was, uh, it, it, it was, let's see, it was built in 1902, sank in October 22, 1929, which is, you know, a week before the, what did it start? Yeah, maybe it'll go back. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Just needed a lot more time. But it might be doing that. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. It was in a storm. The thing about it, uh, 52 people's lives were lost. There were, the, it, the theory we, that they have is that in the, in the storm, it, uh, uh, the hatches were open and it just filled with water and sank. And they carried railroad cars and they may have bashed in this gate here. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Water I see. I'm not clear if it's if, if if it was the railroad cars that did that, but the ones hanging out the back. Yeah. The yeah. ones down, the ones outside, yes. yeah. and ones under the wreck. Right. Well, yeah. Ones yeah. under the wreck, and you have them inside the wreck too. So it's, it's great to. Yeah. Think. We were supposed to go out there to rob the Oh. oh. There's yeah. A line to it now, though. But apparently, it's not. It's it's apparently, you lost the line. You know, I was pretty bad. Yeah, the line kind of goes from here, but sometimes in the mud, right? Yeah. So, so apparently there were no hatches on the boat. Wow. So they couldn't have covered the hatches if they wanted. Yeah. Anyway, it's a really cool one. Yeah, you see the toilets. One of the train cars is full of toilets and split open. Yeah, there's toilets, all kinds of ceramics yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, I had no radio. It, was, it belonged to the Grand Trunk Line, and they were, I guess, known for being pretty cheap. Okay. So, so, they, so they didn't want to spend money on hatches and the covers, they didn't yes. spend money on radio. <laughs> yeah. Good decision. This is sort of near the bow, uh, I guess you call it the chain room, near the front? Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. And that's a neat swing through this jet car going through it, and exiting it. Oh, that's a good idea to exit this whole thing. This is raft lighting up the prop on the back. 
Um, this is a couple of people sitting out at the wheelhouse off there. You can see the line going out to the fair. There's um, sometimes you can carry the money. Um, this is rafts of the exploring wheelhouse. Yeah. So, anyway, that's a really cool one. One of my favorites. Northerner, we're almost done. Northerner, um, this was just died on by some of the people from the group. Yeah, Bruce, man. Do um, you want to say anything quick about it, Pete? Uh, it was. Uh... Built in 1851, it sank on November 29th, 1868. No lives were lost. Everybody was rescued on this one. But it was, uh, again, uh, uh, it was stormy weather that caused it to sink. And it's a beauty. Apparently, it was damaged when they were loading the boat, and it was leaky the oh, whole time okay. it was out in the water. So it was um, didn't take much to... Overcome. And of course, they still had the cargo in there, which is like oh, basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. basically cordwood. A lot of lumber. Yeah. yeah. So repeat after me, I hate Carlos. Ah, okay. <laughs> He's always perfect. Yeah. 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 So Dean, this was your favorite. Why is this your favorite? Because it's so intact. It's yeah. like everything's there. Yeah. And it's, yeah. A, a, and it's a, in a 19th century schooner. Yeah, yeah. Um, briefly, Mahone um, is mainly known for the uh, wait, no. It's a great thing from the Niagara. Um, it's, it's, near, it's oftentimes a second dive after the Northerner, um, and the other second dive that's not in the Little Bit Farther Away, which is the Niagara, which has some cattle. I found that it's China. So, oh, really? So, this is the Mahoney? That was the Mahoney. No, that's the Niagara, because you can see the yeah, cattle. This is the Mahoney. The, the Mahoney gun uh, was, uh, it, it sank under tow. Okay. And this one has these paddle wheels that you can see. And this is the and this is the Niagara, Niagara yeah. which had sixty lives were lost to the Niagara. Okay. It was a paddle wheel steamer, yeah. and uh, had three hundred passengers on board at the time. It caught fire, caught fire, and they sank. And this is one of the biggest collection of larger fish I've seen in the Great Lakes. Those are um, <laughs> suckers. Yeah, yellow suckers. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show just two from up at the Straits of Mackinac. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, the Ever Ward, the Straits of Mackinac Bridge up there is just a great place. And one of them is a Eagle War Ever War, which, um, yeah. uh, it was uh, built in 1888, sank in April 20th, 1909 from ice. Five lives were lost on this. It's about 142 feet of water, I guess. It's the yeah. sand, the deck is yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it, I, 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 to me, this was a boat. I just looked at it and said, if you're a tech diver, you should be able to love this boat because you can go into the hole. Yeah. And, and like, yeah. So I, I, I just did, of course, as a recreational diver. So I, it still is a great dive, even if you're doing recreation. Like it's, yeah. it's gonna be great if you're. Yeah, this is like diving inside. Yeah, you know, this like two decks. Yeah. Two yeah. Decks. yeah. This is the Eber Ward. Yeah. Eber Ward. Yeah. So that's a great one. And then the Cedarville is massive. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a picture of the Canadian Steel. Yeah, you so. can never, you can't dive that on one day for sure. No, no, it's a massive, like a 500 foot steel frame. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of broken in the middle. Yeah, it was built in 1927, sank May 7th, 1965. Ten lives were lost out of a crew of 35. It was a collision with a Norwegian freighter. Okay. And there's a lot of, a lot of, they went to trial. Okay. U.S. Steel went to trial, went to trial over the, um, uh, this, this boat sinking because uh, they were trying to strand it on the beach. They could have stranded a lot sooner, but for some reason, the captain was in constant contact with his bosses. They told him, I'll keep going, I'll keep going. You know? Really? Yeah. And there's been a book written about it. It's very interesting. Wow. wow. But yeah, the was, whole hull is fractured in the middle, and it's just kind of swimming through that fracture. Mm -hmm. okay. When you dived it, I know with us, they always stay with actually moving the dive boat. Yeah, so yeah. They, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's time to surface. We've been here for a while, but uh, yeah, that's just a few looks at wrecks around the lakes. Chris, did you get the Dylan Pod? Oh.
Do you hire the same band every meeting? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, we like a little music. I know a really good death metal Irish band. Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> no, really, uh, I've never built to Lake Michigan. Yeah. So I just want to know what should I expect on the fifth day approaching the boat, preparing for the boat? What am I wearing under my dry suit? Okay, I've got a dry suit. I've got a hoodie, seven mil, I've got gloves. What am I wearing under it? What am I bringing with me to the boat? My old ways. I don't think so. I'm sure there's a couple other people that have never done this before. Yeah. I've told everyone in the world but you. And I live here. So yeah. what, what am I going to expect? So I'll do it very briefly because there's a link. There's a Google Doc I wrote that kind of lays all this out. But it's a very different culture than diving in the Caribbean. Caribbean, you know, you're guided around. They have all the rentals here. They give you ways to They don't give you nothing. Mm -hmm. They're all self-supported. Um, and I wait for it. Yeah, the water temperature once you get down below 30 feet, you can get anywhere from excuse me, I think 36 to 52. Um, and so you wear typically most people do dry suit, a little press, I still have a bunch of them wet suit, uh, these nuts. My wife um, has wet suit. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Most people wear dry suit with Yeah, as long as it's, it's warm on, on the surface. Just yeah. Yeah. three layers of feet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, dry gloves, a lot of people. I drove with wet gloves until about three years ago. Um, I only dye wet gloves. I've, I've never used dye gloves. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Anyway, yeah. Um, uh, 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 but they're deep. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They're all this one that's a hundred of the turtle charts, it's really cool. Ann Arbor number five was a six. Hey, Eric, you tried to see what he did. So, you know, I was with parents that were on the side of that. So, you know, I tried to dive there. Because of the prevailing wind, it's supposed to be right over there. Yeah, that's the one I was producing. And I think the lake is good. And this is your arms. You can't go as far as the tank that we're actually going to be You have to see some of that. But it's about an hour out of the shore of St. Joe's. Because you're attacking the ladder a lot. Oh, oh, Pina has a double action also with the photo. Yes, they double actions out of the Pina. Yeah, we have a two out here. Only and then once, usually once the sun will run out. So, so where's it? It's in Alpina. Oh God! But really, double action is great for getting started. Double action. Because I, I, I did a tour once at the Vault Museum.